Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the language of Quran, easier than English. Lesson 2, part 2. In lesson 1, we looked at the four properties or an overview of the four properties of an ism and also took, took a closer look at Arab. In this lesson part 1 video, we've already seen the property of definiteness. And of course, you should be now familiar with the seven categories of ism that are definite. What we're going to do in the second part of lesson 2 is to do some practical um, examples of how that knowledge can be used to form nominal sentences in Arabic. So let's begin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah, on the first session, which was the introductory session of mapping Arabic, I took you through this map and I said to you that this is the journey that we're going to be following. And these are the key components of our knowledge that we need to acquire about the Arabic language. And of course, if from here, you can easily now recall uh, that there are only three types of words in Arabic. They come together to form a construct. So Alhamdulillah, you can see now that we are on lesson two. We've only had a brief look at the proper, uh, at the four properties of an ism, we've learned two in particular, the Arab and also the um, definiteness. We're going to use that knowledge, inshallah, to start forming complete constructs. And again, if you recall from the introductory, I mentioned complete construct is something that gives us a full meaning. And there are two types of sentences in Arabic. One is called Jumla Ismiya, which is a nominal sentence. The other is called Jumla Fi'liya, which is a verbal sentence. So in this lesson, let's begin by looking at the rules related to Jumla Ismiya. And Alhamdulillah, you will see the practical way we have been approaching the learning of Arabic in these coming lessons inshallah and each lesson we will develop our knowledge of one of the components in this map a deeper and deeper understanding uh, inshallah the definition of a sentence according to the dictionary a, a set a, a sentence is a set of words that is complete i.e gives us a complete meaning typically containing a subject and a predicate so it has two parts the subject and predicate this uh, we should be familiar with already. I've explained some of it in the introductory session. So in Arabic, Alhamdulillah, there are only two types of sentences. That's it. The first type of sentence called Jumla Ismiya, and it's called Jumla Ismiya because it begins with an Ismun. And this is why you need to be able to recognize an Ism and of course, uh, understand its properties to be able to forming a sentence. And the other type of sentence is called Jumla Fi'liya, and that is because it begins with a Fi'lun. And again, in English, I remind you, we don't normally start a sentence with a verb. Whereas in Arabic, we can start a sentence with a ismun or a fa'lun, a verb or a noun plus. Either of those we can do. So for example, here we have Muhammadun, Rasulun. That is a complete sentence in Arabic. It, it means Muhammad, peace be upon him, is a messenger. The first part or the first word in this case is our subject and then second part is our predicate. So this is how Jumla Ismiya can be split into two parts, uh, subject and predicate. Verbal sentences in Arabic are slightly different. We're going to take a closer look at them later. But for now, just note the following points. It begins with a verb. So Khalaqa is a verb. It means he created Allah and we have Al Insana. Meaning of it is Allah created mankind. It has three parts, essentially, the verb, the doer of the verb, and the object. And that's the only, alhamdulillah, detail you need to know at this stage. We are going to take a very closer look at lesson, in this lesson, at Jumla Ismiya. And inshallah, in book two, we'll be looking at a detailed study after we studied verbs and the rules related to them at Jumla Fi'liya. We will be using some uh, Jumla Fi'liya in these lessons up to lesson 15, but not in detail. We are going to be looking at components of Jumla Ismiya in some detail, inshallah. So what are the rules for forming Jumla Ismiya? Alhamdulillah, the rules are very, very simple. Once you become familiar with the four properties of an ism, it's relatively easy. Of course, Jumla Ismiya begins with a ism. It can contain verbs, but it, it can also form sentences in Arabic with two isms. Take this example here. Hamid is a teacher. You should all be able to tell me that these are both isms. Why? Because they end with Tanween. Remember what I told you in the introductory session, that if you see a Tanween at the end, you can be certain that that word is an ism. So we have two words here. Hamidun Mu'allimun. And I've translated as Hamid is a teacher. Hamid is a teacher. So what is going on between the two? What are the rules? Very simple, inshallah. If you remember this diagram or note it down, you'll be able to make sense 
of the rules of the sentence. So we have first part and we have the second part. The first part is called Muqtada and the second part is called Khabar. Now in English, literal meaning Muqtada means something you introduce, Khabar means news. But in uh, translation, we will use subject and predicate, subject and predicate. Now, what are the rules? The Muqtada needs to have the following points. Muqtada should be normally definite. So you see here that it is D. I put underneath here for your benefit. So you can see it as definite. Why is Hamidun definite? Well, we know from what we've learned in the first part, it is a proper noun. Proper nouns are always definite. In all the examples I'm going to give you in this lesson, that everything's going to be masculine and singular, so I will not need to repeat that. But here we can see Hamid is masculine. I hope that's easy for you to understand. And singular. When I say Hamid, I'm talking about one person. But it is Rafa. How do we know it's Rafa? Because of Un. If it was An, it would be Nasab. If it was In, it would be Jar. So the rule is the Muqtada should be definite and it should be Rafa. Please note that if it's Nasab, it will not work. If it's Jar, it will not work. So Muqtada needs to be definite and Rafa. As far as the Khabar is concerned, the second part, the predicate, it needs to be or it normally is indefinite. Indefinite. Mu'allimun is indefinite. It means a teacher. It could be any teacher. How do I know it's indefinite? Well, it doesn't fall into any of my seven categories. It is not a proper noun. It doesn't have al in front of it. It is not a pronoun. It is not a pointing word, etc, etc, etc. So therefore, it is indefinite. How do we know it's rafa? Because of the un. So you can see here, it needs to be rafa. So the rule is the muqtada is definite. And in Rafa, the Khabar is indefinite and Rafa. As far as the number and gender is concerned, whatever the gender of the Muqtada, it will match the gender of the Khabar. The Khabar will need to be the same. And whatever is the number, whether it's singular, dual or plural, it will be matching the Khabar. So the Khabar will match the property of gender and number. As I said to you, until we get to next lesson, we're going to, not going to touch anything feminine. We're only going to look at masculine words in this. And of course, we're only going to look at singular. So all we need to know is that the Muqtada is definite. Rafa matches the number and gender with the Khabar. The Khabar is indefinite and Rafa. So again, I'll let me share with you another diagram, which has, oh, inshallah will help you remember all of these points. So as far as the Definiteness is uh, concerned and Arab is concerned. We're going to look at them in detail. Both must be Rafa. Please note that Nasab or Jar will not work. And the Muqtada should be definite and the Khabar should be indefinite. And of course, gender and number will match. Now, there is no word in the Arabic language for is, am um, or are. So again, I repeat, there is no word in the Arabic language for is, am um, or are. So you will put that when you translate in between the Muqtada and the Khabar. So you will translate the Muqtada first, then you will translate the Khabar and in between you will put is, am um, or are according to the rules of the English language. Please make a note of that. You don't put is, am um, and are as you choose. It has to be in line with the English language. For example, I will say I am a Muslim. I am not going to say I is a Muslim. Right? He is a Muslim. I am not going to say he am a Muslim. I'm not going to say you, all of you are Muslims. I'm not going to say all of you is Muslims. So again, it's to do with the English language as there is no word in the Arabic language for is, am um, or are. If you can remember that, inshallah ta'ala, and where do you put it in the translation? You put it between the translation of the Muqtada and the translation of the Khabar. That is the summary of all you need to know at this stage for the jumla ismiya, the nominal sentence, the sentence that which begins with an ism. Yes, it can have verbs, but we'll cover that once we've learned verbal sentences. But in Arabic, you can make a sentence with only two words, whereas in English, I've got four for the two words in the English language. So please take a look and note these points down, inshallah. Of course, if you have the book, they will be in the book. But for now, just note those points down. So summary of the rules begins with an ism, has two parts. Muqtada and Khabar. Muqtada is definite and Rafa. Khabar is indefinite and Rafa and should match in gender and number. Let's begin by forming the first set of sentences 
using proper nouns. Al ismul alam. Take a look at this simple sentence in Arabic. Two words only, and you can see from the four properties illustration below them, Allahu is definite. Why is it definite? Of course, it's a proper noun. And it is in Rafa. So we can tell that from the Dhamma and definite from the fact that it falls into the proper noun category. And then we have the second part, which is our predicate. And again, you can see that it is indefinite. Why is it indefinite? Well, it doesn't fall into any of the seven categories we mentioned earlier. It doesn't have Al. And of course, it's not a pronoun or anything like that. So it's definitely indefinite. So it's an indefinite ism. And of course, it is ending with Un. Therefore, we will say it is Rafa. So all the conditions I mentioned earlier. And of course, we only have two words here. Allah and the word Ghafurun means forgiving. So we will put is in between the two of them. So Muqtada and the Khabar. So the way to remember it is Muqtada is Am or A Khabar. And you put is Am or A according to the rules of the English language. So I hope inshallah this beautiful sentence, of course, uh, Alhamdulillah, Allah is forgiving and we seek his forgiveness at all times. So it's a beautiful sentence for you to start your Arabic with. Allah is forgiving. On the screen, you will now see four English sentences. Allah is all knowing is our first sentence. Again, you can easily tell where the muqtada subject is and where the khabar is. Again, as a hint, whatever comes before the is, am or a usually is the muqtada and whatever comes after is the khabar. So we need to translate the muqtada into Arabic. And in Arabic, we write, of course, Allah and we put who at the end Allahu why it needs to be Rafa and all knowing will do Alim Alim and at the end we put Un why it's indefinite and it needs to be Rafa the second one we have is Nuh alayhi salam is a messenger so the spelling of Nuh is Nuh of course it's a proper noun so we need to make sure it is Rafa to make it a Muqtada. Otherwise, it will not be Muqtada. And the Khabar is Rasul. You may be familiar with this word already. Rasul. And then we need to make out, make sure it is Rafa. And Rasulun, it's indefinite. Could be any messenger. So Nuhun, Nuh alayhi salam is a messenger. Next, we have Shu'aib is a prophet. Again, let me show you the how to spelling of that. It is a proper noun, so we make it into uh, Rafa and it becomes now our Muqtada. And of course, Prophet is Nabi. And we will put Tanween at the end uh, to make it Rafa. Tanween with the two Dhammas. So Shu'aibun Nabiyun. Shu'aib alayhi salam is a prophet. Next one is Hamid. We've seen Hamid quite a few times, so we should be able to spell that one. Hamid, and again we need to make it Rafa. So Hamidun is your Muqtada. It is definite. Why? Because it is a proper noun. And of course, the word, the way to spell Imam is Imam, and it will be Imamun. Why? Because it needs to be Rafa. So indefinite and Rafa. So you can see, inshallah, all the four uh, sentences very, very easy to make. Only with two words, and you put is, am, or are in the translation as is required in English. Alhamdulillah, you're now capable of making your own Arabic sentences. Do play with the vocabulary inshallah and see how many sentences you can form um, from it or anything that you can recognize that you find anywhere. This will give you the confidence inshallah that you need and of course help you remember the rules. Now let's form sentences where the subject is made definite by the use of Al. So normally it is indefinite. We put Al to make it definite. Another sentence for you here. We're only made up of two words. We have Al Masjidu. Al Masjidu. Again, I hope you have no problems recognizing that this is definite. Why? Because of Al. Al, the in English. So that is definite. And the fact that it is Rafa by the presence of the Dhamma here. So it is Rafa. Kabirun, which means big in Arabic. Kabirun is indefinite. Indefinite. 
therefore it has met the first criterion of being khabar and of course it is rafa by the presence of the two dhammas or tanween at the end so we have now the rules being made the first part is my mubtada the second part is my khabar and i'm putting is um or are in between here of course most appropriate is is so the mosque is big the mosque is big very beautiful sentence very simple to do inshallah ta'ala following the rules that we've just mentioned so let's translate these three sentences from english to arabic the boy is wise so let me give you the uh, vocabulary first for the word boy the boy in arabic is wala wala and uh, walad and the, to be rafa we put waladun but remember it is the subject so it cannot be indefinite so it could be any boy so to, in order to make it the boy we will put al in front so we'll put al al walad but remember what we did when we added al the tanween had to go so we check that off al waladu al waladu please pay attention to the two things i did walad means boy waladun is rafa I put Al in front, so I need to get rid of the Tanween. So it's still Rafa, but definite with Al. And the word for wise is Hakim. So let's put that in. And it could be indefinite. It is indefinite, but it could be anything referring to anything Hakimun. Okay, is the Rafa version of the indefinite word. Hakimun. Al Waladu Hakimun. The boy is wise. I want to say the man is pious. Exactly the same principle. Rajulun will be Rafa. I put Al in front. Now there's quite a few things I want to show you here, inshallah, just to pay attention. We have Al, we put Alif there. But here note that I'm not going to read okay, the Lam. I'm going to go straight to the Ra. Ar Rajulu. Why? Shamsi Kamari. Please refer back to the previous sessions where I mentioned this. Ar Rajulu, Ar Rajulu, the man. Ayas, well, let's use the word Salih. And of course, it's indefinite and it's Rafa by Hun, Salihun. The man is pious. And we have the house. The word for house in Arabic is Bayt. So it'll be Baytun. I go in front here and I put Al in front. So it'll be Al Baytu. And the word for beautiful is Jamil. Al Baytu Jamilun. The house is beautiful. A nominal sentence has only one subject. Subject Mubtada one. But it can have more than one khabar. Let's look at some examples. So on the screen we have Allahu Alimun Hakimun. The word Allah here is the subject, definite and rafa. Alimun is indefinite and rafa. Hakimun is indefinite and rafa. The word wise is not a description of the word all knowing. They're both actually two khabars or two sub uh, two predicates one following the other and in the quran is very common to find the attributes of allah azza wa jal in pairs in pairs mainly so you can see a beautiful example of where we have more than one khabar the translation is allah is all knowing all wise allah is all knowing all wise and that is how we translate such sentences so two more examples here for you to give the same point, inshallah. Allahu Sami'un Basirun. Allahu Sami'un Basirun. Allah is all hearing, all seeing. Allah is all hearing, all seeing. So next we have another example. Muhammadun Nabiyun Rasulun. Muhammad is a prophet, a messenger. He's both. Prophet, Nabi, and uh, Rasul. So again, you can see here two different khabars, one following the other, but the subject coming first. So don't be surprised if you see 
more than one khabar uh, as a um, you know frequently as you come across in your studies lastly let's just add one more word to our vocabulary set which help us enhance and make more and better sentences using wa wa in arabic means and and so we can use that in order to join two parts together, just like we do in English. And it has been used around 9,000 times in the Quran. Wow has a number of uses in Arabic. The most common one, of course, just like the English A and D. What does it do? It joins two parts together. As a general rule in Arabic, please remember this. I will repeat this a couple of times for you until it becomes familiar. That whenever there is a single letter word and a word here, wow is not a letter here. It is actually a word in its own right. So a single letter word in Arabic is always written next to or attached to the following word. It is not written independently, separately with spaces in between. Since wow is uh, a word of its own, but a single letter word, it will be joined in writing. Of course, wow doesn't allow anything to be written after it. So they will see it very squeezed together without a gap in between and at the beginning is quite difficult to recognize but inshallah ta'ala soon you'll be able to recognize it if you remember this principle so wow meaning and and let's see what we can do with that inshallah in the first example you've seen these two pronouns before anta wa ana here i'm just joining two pronouns together i'm using wow in the middle anta wa ana you and i in the second example i'm joining two sentences together i have hamidun talibun Hamid is a student. Please work that out, inshallah, from the examples before. I'm sure you can work that out. Wa Mariamu and Mariam, a muallimatun. Mariam is a teacher. So you can see here two sentences in Arabic joined together, just like we do in English with wow in between. And then we have kabirun, big. Wa jadidun. Here two adjectives, big and new. Big and new. And there are many other uses. You will see that, inshallah. Just note it down for now. Wow means and. Alhamdulillah, we've reached the end of lesson two, part two. A short practical man example of the theory that we have learned in the previous sessions and bringing it to practice in order to, for you to learn how the rules of sentences and how to translate them correctly. Let me tell you the secret of learning. One of the most important points to remember about learning is I listen, I forget. Whatever you hear, you're going to forget. Human beings do that. We are, uh, it is our human nature to do so. I see, I remember. I listen, I forget. I see, I remember. And that is why I use both in my teachings spoken word alhamdulillah may allah grant me tawfiq to say it in a way that you understand it more importantly i use a lot of visual to help you remember things and then the next bit which is really practical for you i practice i learn without practice you're not going to learn anything i'm not going to make any big claims about the videos i'm making nor am i going to make any big claims about my book or anything else i know from practical experience you will not learn anything uh, especially things that are theoretical just by listening or seeing you have to practice and it is this reason I've included the practical here to show you how you put that knowledge into practice and inshallah as you do more and more exercises and exercises are available in the book and also in the uh, ebook uh, uh, the ebook form inshallah you can get it there and the model answers, me giving you the screen uh, on the screen, exercise and answer doesn't work. You have to literally sit in front of a book and write with your own hand. And this will also give you practical example of writing Arabic. So let me repeat. I listen, I forget. I see, I remember. I practice, I learn. I teach, I master. All of you. All of you are learning from me. May Allah grant you tawfiq to learn easily. But please make the intention of learning to teach others, to share this knowledge with others in your own local community, in your masjid, in your house, wherever the opportunity comes, learn with the intention of teaching. Our Prophet ﷺ said, the best amongst you is the one who learns the Quran and teaches it. So our intention should be to learn, of course, to understand, of course, to implement in our lives, but also to share what we have learned with the Ummah at large. So remember these rules, inshallah, it is the most important rule that as regard learning is concerned. I listen, I forget. I see, I remember. I practice, I learn. I teach, I master. Otherwise, as we say in English, use it or lose it. The secret to learning Arabic or anything else is practice, practice, 
practice. There is no way around it. May Allah bless you, dear brothers and sisters, for watching the videos and your comments and your feedback and your suggestions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you the very best in this world in the hereafter. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all tawfiq to learn, to have the patience to learn the Arabic so that we can begin to understand the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the time and the effort that you make in your scale. And please remember me in your duas until the next video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.